you're coming into a role that can be tough, right? It's an interim role. You, you're on a year long contract to help guide the district between Jenkins leaving, whoever they hire new. Yep. Um, let's talk first about your big priorities during this year. Sure. Well, first of all, thank you. You acknowledged all of the pieces of the role that are in place for me, right? A short term assignment, really important assignment though. And it's an important year as we move forward to bridge, as you said, Dr. Jenkins and the new full-time superintendent. So I'm really clear about my four priorities and um, have had great conversations with the Board of Education as they appointed me to the job to make sure they are also their priorities because we are all connected in the work. So the first priority for me is always about students, student achievement, always about really thinking about high quality education and social and emotional supports for them. So that is my clear number one focus for students and schools first. Great leaders, great teachers. Uh, my second priority is creating that stable foundation so that the board and the community can find the best possible superintendent for Madison. This is the community superintendent. So I wanna do everything that I can to create a solid foundation, clear ways of working, effective communication. You're gonna hear me talk about that a lot. So my third priority is just that. It's about strengthening our ways of communicating and the ways that we work and make decisions. Um, I've heard from lots of people in my transition um, that they need more clarity in those areas. So I've been working in partnership with the board and with my new team to do some new level setting around that. And then my fourth priority is, right, this urgency and this need around hiring high quality staff, teachers, building leaders, school staff, and retaining those people in our district. Our students deserve the best teachers, our schools deserve the best staff, so that's another top priority for me as I start work with the district. And I'm gonna give you the opportunity to dive a little bit deeper into some of those priorities, but I think we have to start with the third one you mentioned, uh, effective communication. It, it's, it's no secret that the, the communications department in Madison School District has come under a lot of fire mm -hmm. since the complaint was released against Tim Lamonts. He's now on leave. I wanna get into that in a second, but I think the overarching question here is a complaint our station has heard about the Madison district for I would say a couple of years now is transparency. We can't, they can't get open records. They feel like some of those questions aren't getting answered during the pandemic, post pandemic. You're in a difficult position here to answer to a tenure that was not yours, but what's your message to the community, first of all, about that transparency? Yeah, so first of all, thank you for answering or for asking the question. Um, that is, as I said, a top priority. I can say, since I have started in trans transitional work with the district, we have already made great gains in those areas. Those were my first meetings when I started. They are my last check-ins at the end of the day. Um, I feel like we have really stabilized the system in terms of transparency, transparency and clarity around open records and how we're handling that. I feel as if we have um, really done some work around establishing what are these clear ways of communicating with each other. We know we have work to do around efficiency, around accuracy, um, and around how decisions are made. People need to know and understand that. I've heard that from people within the district as well. Um, and there is nothing more important than our relationship with you, our relationship with the community. Right, we have great stories to tell. Our schools are part of this community. We have work to do rebuilding. That is top of my list around rebuilding those relationships and rebuilding trust. Um, and we want to have a workplace where our staff members and our teachers, our communication team members, value, respect, feeling that they're empowered, they have a voice. They have a sense of, sense of efficacy around the work. And we have to, right now, over-support our folks that are working in communications, working with you all, right, to tell our stories and to be clear and to be honest. Um, I feel like I have a responsibility to that. And I owe that to the district this year to intentionally, as I said, wrap around that, support it, and do better for people around clarity.
Let me ask you a couple more specific questions on that before we move on. Specifically, you mentioned you tackled this on your first day. You, you, you've implement, you worked to implement changes since your first day, which was we're taping this on a Tuesday, so that was just over a week yeah. ago. Yeah. Um, did you have a hand in Tim Lamont's commu uh, communications director, as far as I understand it right now, going on leave? So, first of all, thank you for asking the question. Um, there are um, confidentiality, there are issues of confidentiality around this, and thank you for respecting that. Um, and I just want to reiterate the fact that we are working hard with the team to make sure that we are supporting them in the work moving forward. We're respecting the laws around confidentiality. And as things, um, if things progress, as things progress, we will be sure that we share information as necessary. Is there an another active investigation ongoing in that? Right now, um, again, thank you for respecting the confidentiality and um, our need to deal with this person personal matter. Uh, and what I would say lastly on that or ask lastly is a lot of things came out in the complaint, the internal complaint filed by fellow employees into Lamont's conduct over the last few years, both internally and externally to members of the press. I mean, do you feel that some of the statements he's alleged to have made represent the, represent the communications department now and what you envision going forward? So we envision a communications department that um, is a strong team that are empowered to do their work speaking on behalf of district leadership and the needs of students and families. We believe that um, all employees in Madison um, are entitled to a workplace that feels safe, that feels empowering, that feels supported. Um, and that is part of our responsibility to number one, pay attention to that, to number two, support people in their work. We've got great people in our communications department. I've always said, I said to my new staff, they're actually starting on board with me this week, good people need support too, right? They need the regular ways of working, the regular check-ins. So it is our expectation that our staff have that. And if it's not happening, we need to find a way to make that happen. You've brought new staff into the comms department specifically or just other administrative staff? I would say, um, not specifically communications department, but just my team as I come in, I wanna be sure we have a transitional team, a cabinet that um, is um, empowered to work with the school board and the board of education and our district office teams to create and support schools and to partner with all of you, right? To tell our stories and to um, work together on behalf of children and families. And you have a plan for clearing records backlogs. We do, yes. I'd love to hear that. We do have a plan for that. Um, I don't have exact specifics. I know we have made great progress on that. I am working really hard with our general counsel and legal department, and we do have some hires to make yet in that department that are on track um, and scheduled. Love to hear that. Uh, moving on, um, staffing levels. You mentioned one of your priorities is recruiting and retaining mm -hmm. top level staff. Uh, it was last summer where this was really not just in the local news, but national news where just staffing levels for teachers just across the nation was at an, I want to say an all time low. Um, where does staffing stamps right now as we head into the summer, look forward into the 2023, 2024 school year? And what's kind of, give me some more specifics about your plans for that. Yeah. Thank you for asking. Um, we are actually moving towards being fully staffed in HR, our Human Resources Department. And we have less than half the number of vacancies right now than we had last year at this time. So um, I meet with HR regularly. We just hired a brand new Senior Executive Director of HR. So you're probably hearing me talk about ways of working systems and structures a lot. I've mentioned that a lot. Um, I really believe that we have an obligation this year and an opportunity to strengthen the ways we work so that we can make high quality things happen in classrooms and in schools. So a couple of things around HR to your, to your question. Um, we have a brand new approach to hiring, um, onboarding, and we have a whole new software system that um, has been put in place. Our HR director met with our principals last week at the first principal meeting. Um, when the principals heard about this new system, they stood up and cheered. It will make hi the hiring process quicker, more transparent. Principals and hiring authorities are able to go in, see who's in the queue, who is a candidate, what their licenses are, are they interested in 
a second licensure area. We have hard to fill areas in bilingual, special education, um, custodial, food service, world language. Those are um, really critical shortages in the nation, but also here. But this system will be more coherent. It will make our hiring practices and ways of working more efficient and principals have direct access to more information. So it is about filling these vacancies, but it's also about we need to improve our ways of working around this so we can get people in and get them in the queue and get them working um, and supported. Um, in addition to that, HR is really working towards um, this notion of supporting and maintaining high quality staff from the day that they start with us until the day that they might leave, retire or resign, um, right? Because we want, we want to retain our good people. We invest in them. So there are things that we can do along the way that can help them with their jobs, with their certification, with growing themselves as teachers and leaders um, that this software system will also build into it. So. I am really happy that our HR department um, has actually taken the time to not just do the day-to-day, -day, let's get people interviewed and in, but also longer term, what do we need to stabilize to keep people and support people moving forward. I will add, um, the board made um, a historic investment in teacher salary around base wage um, and has provided them with 8% cost of living increase, which is um, unprecedented and is a real signal of support for the work that our teachers do. Um, I think that I feel strongly this year about this idea of going back to elevating the craft and the profession of teaching, right? We need to help people find the joy in this again. Um, as I have said before, that relationship, that those interactions that happen in a classroom are precious. They are valued. How do we invest in that and really uplift our people that are doing that work on a daily basis? I really believe we have an opportunity this year to um, be more explicit and focused on that. And then investment in teachers is obviously an investment in students, which kind of leads to mm -hmm. what I want to set up as the next question. You, you know, you have a long history in the Madison School District, dating back to when you were a principal. And mm -hmm. as principal, your test scores and overall achievement actually increased at your school that you were a principal of, mm -hmm. um, which leads me to, you know, Madison School District's overall report card, if you will, yeah. um, did decrease this past school year. There's obviously some of that can be blamed the pandemic. There's other factors involved. Yep. And again, I want to mention yeah. you have a year in this role and yeah. this is a long-term thing yeah all that being said do you see a way to get overall achievement test scores up in the next school year yeah that's a great question and i i appreciate you saying and sort of noting um what can we do in this next year right i've said all along this is a really important year people have heard me tell the story right this next year we have little ones that will be in first grade one year they have one time to be first graders we have high school graduates that have one year to graduate. This is a really important year. And I do think there are impacts that we can make um, on the work of schools, on this journey toward increasing proficiency for students, and also increasing right the um, social and emotional skill development um, that kids are making um, developmentally as they go through their career in school. So we have um, a group of principal supervisors that are focused entirely on coaching and supporting principals and their leadership and their support for schools improvement plans that are all designed around increasing student achievement and those other goals and benchmarks around social and emotional learning and actually school safety. Um, so we have tailored those school improvement plans with the associate superintendents and part of that also is tailoring the support and resources that schools get, right? Schools and students that need more support get different support and different resources. So it's been really important that we look at how we um, use that lens of equity to support schools and that we deeply know who our students are and who our teachers are so that they can set schools up 
for success. I always used to say when I was a principal at LVM and Lowell that um, I had to set my school up for K through fifth grade so that every teacher knew every student and every student had a trusted adult that they could go to, right? So it's about how do we set that up so students can have greater success academically um, and what real moves can we make this year around specifically those areas of literacy, right? Social and emotional learning and growth. Um, and we've already been talking about what is, what's the first day um, sort of checklist how we get schools set up. I've already had um, conversations about what do principals need to do the first day? What do we need for our staff to get ready the first day? What do we need to do the first couple days to explicitly teach students, right? What it, what it's like to be in school, um, what it's, you know, what it's like to, you know, spend a day um, with peers and, and build all of those skills. So we're working on that already while, um, while teachers and principals and staff are off re-energizing and, and, right, having their time. We are actually really working. It's a busy time for us to get schools set up for success and get them the right supports if they need them around specific areas of achievement. I want to talk about another issue that just in general is one that concerns a lot of parents in the district and that's one of violence in schools, mm -hmm. um, particularly the high schools in Madison. Yeah. You know, they there's quite frequently as a news outlet, we see headline after headline yeah. of there's been a fight, there's been this, there's been that. Mm -hmm. um, a little bit of a two-part question. I want to start with this. Do you have a position that you're willing to make publicly on body, uh, sorry, on um, police officers in schools? So what I will say is um, I believe that if we have a well-articulated plan for school and student safety um, and the staff members to support that plan, every school should have a safety team. Um, if we can do that um, with whatever staff necessary, then that's the direction we need, we need to go. I believe that when the behavior education plan was created, and I still believe this, I was there when Dr. Cheatham um, put that together, I can remember those early meetings. Right, and the intent of that plan was to give students at all levels what they need to succeed. Um, did we get it all right in the beginning? Probably not. Are there ways that we can make things better? Um, be it with our school, our own school security officers, be it with our own school staff. I think there are ways we can be better about that. I think to go back to your question, your comment around communication and clarity, I think we can be clearer about that too. And I think that's part of the work short term that I can do. But I do think, um, and I'm expecting that our schools have very clear safety and security plans in place, um, that our central office team, our security team, I know has been doing some really great foundational work around how to support schools. I think we have to hold people accountable, um, grown-ups accountable for how we handle that at schools. And I think that we have to hold students accountable um, in a way that um, leads toward um, a change in behavior, right? And learning, that's, that's what we're about. We're a learning institution. So um, I do, what I do take a really strong stance on is I believe we had to have to have the right team in schools to make that work. I think we're still learning. Um, the board actually just met a couple of weeks ago around proposed policy changes to the behavior education plan, um, proposed language and maybe practice changes. So I think through that process, we may learn more about what needs are out there in schools as it relates to safety. Do you see any gaps immediately that you would want to address with those security and safety teams? I think it's just, um, it's being transparent with those teams, right? Once those teams are formed and the plans are written, how do people know what's in them, right? It's about how are we as a staff in a high school, a middle school, an elementary school, even in central office, how are we communicating about what that means and what are the sort of spaces and places well, we're gonna talk about that. Where are we gonna talk about proactive strategies? If something does happen, what, how are we gonna have an after action review about that and learn so the next time we can do things better? So I think there are ways, to your point, we can be clearer in the work that we do. And um, that's, a, that's a real expectation of mine that um, we find the spaces and places to have those conversations and explicitly talk about that. 
We've covered a lot of ground. Mm -hmm. Is there anything that you wish I'd asked that you'd like to address? Um, thank you for that opportunity. I will just say that um, I am thankful and grateful for this position for the short term. I feel heartened and I truly feel that my work thus far in transition has been in partnership with the Board of Education. I am really looking forward to working with them, working with you all. Um, I am committed to MMSD um, and, and thankful that they asked me to come back and will, when they find the permanent superintendent, I will be here to support whatever transition that might look like um, and just am looking forward to a year where we get to do some rebuilding of trust, um, do more explicitly around transparency and clarity, and um, I'm just really happy to be supporting students first. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you.